Hey guys, what's up? There'll be no rapid game today. Uh, I was struck down with flu uh, symptoms yesterday, so I've been focusing on, on resting. I think when you get a cold or a flu, that's your body telling you, lie the heck down and don't do a lot. So I'm up, um, I've played a few Blitz games, and there's one that I've picked out to share with you guys today. It was just a five minute Blitz, but it's a really good example of a common attacking ideas in the Grand Prix if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, so if you're looking for an anti-Sicilian, if you don't play the Alapin or the Smith Moore or whatever, you might want to check this out. Okay, so we have a Sicilian with E4, C5. And I'm playing this, this British Grand Prix idea right now. It, it seems to surprise people. I played it over the board uh, the other week and after the game, my opponent said, what was that opening? I, d I, didn't, I didn't recognize it at all. And the great thing is you can normally just pretty much bang out the same system, um, pretty much whatever they do. And of course, as I've said before, not having your knight on c3 with the, <coughs> excuse me, the close Sicilian gives you the option of playing pawn to c3, as we may see on move eight. Okay, so d3, and this looks very quiet and kind of unassuming at this point in time, kind of Philidor-like almost. And black is now, Posturing to do a bishop fianchetto, we play f4, they fianchetto the bishop, we play knight f3. And here, there's a bit of tension. Um, however, if we allow them to take, we just activate our bishop. Of course, it, it means that we could end up with a problem here. So what do we do? In the game, I decided to capture. They capture, and now we have knight tension. I ignore that and just castle. So we're going for rapid development. If the knight takes here, I could even recapture with the rook. I could recapture with the bishop as well. They don't do that. Uh, they develop their other knight to be seven. And now I push c3. The point here is I'm, I'm defending this pawn and liberating this dark squared bishop that's now able to come into the game. And we're going to see a really good example of the typical attack. Now, <clears throat> what we're going for, the the kind of dream scenario in the Sicilian Grand Prix, any version of the Sicilian Grand Prix, is this caveman attack. And it's kind of brutal. So the idea is queen e1, you're going to drop your queen in here, particularly if they fear cut their the, the bishop in front of the king, right? You're going to drop your bishop in here. Um, and if, if they take, obviously your queen will take back, then the knight's going to come in. Now they'll, they'll then be able to push the pawn, but you can just capture, okay? Now, so let's let's see how this pans out. So first, I bring out my bishop to here. Not sure about that. Um, queen e1 was also an idea. It's actually saying we should have traded knights and lure their bishop out into the open. Uh, but I bring my bishop out with, it's, it comes with a threat against this knight. I've now got two attackers, only one defender. What are they gonna do? Okay, so they now bring their other knight. This is the knight that's come from here. Um, it's now come out to defend, which is fine by me, and now queen e1. Very standard move. They push a pawn in the middle. I develop my other knight. b6 comes, and now I simply capture here. Now, why am I doing this? Okay, because the only way they can recapture is to bring the queen out here. Because um, what I want to do, if you think about what I want to do, I want to bring my queen to h4, I want to put my knight on here, in fact, I want to bring my queen to h4, then this, and then my knight to here. Now, if I bring my queen to h4, they could simply snuff out my attack by trading queens off. So first of all, I decide, well, let's capture here and lure their queen out into a more innocuous position. It looks like they're developing their queen, but in fact, for my purposes, the engine still thinks I'm worse with uh, point eight in black's favor, but that's only minor, okay? They bring out a bishop, I'm thinking this is not, not a problem. Yes, they've got three attackers on this pawn, but this is not my concern. I, I'm not really too interested in, in defending that pawn. Bishop h6 now. And this is the pattern that you really need to memorize as a Grand Prix player, okay? So the idea is that if they do nothing, right, our knight is gonna come in. We don't do this first. If we do this and then king takes, and our knight comes in, they can throw in h5. This is the point, okay? Now, the attack doesn't always work. Right, so they grab this pawn, I'm like, whatever. 
Well, trade-off. Okay, a trade-off. I developed my rook. That was apparently a mistake. Bishop takes g7 was the move. But this is all about the attack. I'm not worried about this. That comes with discovery on the queen. Um, so here they've got to play bishop takes h6. Otherwise white is better. They don't do that. They move the queen. That is a blunder. Right now, what do we do? Bishop takes... In fact, it's a knight takes e5 is the best move here. Bishop takes g7 is the second best move. And knight to e4 comes in at number 3. I don't do any of those. <laughs> I play knight to g5. And here it's saying they should push f6. Okay, And you can see it's, it's very sharp. It's like the engine says black is better if black is Magnus Carlsen. Which he isn't. He's 1545 rated. Okay, so now I take the bishop, right? And here, the, the, notice the king cannot capture because I have queen takes h7 checkmate. And black, black just wasn't really ready for this. So they know they can't do this. So they gain some time with a, a check and a royal fork. I simply capture with the knight. Now, there, there may be, oh, I may have missed some wins here along the line, okay? But I am plus five at this point. I'm actually two pieces up because still they can't recapture the bishop because they still get checkmated. Okay, so now h5 comes. It's the it's the only move, but it's it's desperate desperate times. And now I should just capture the rook, which I do. They capture back, and I'm up seven points in material. The game goes on for a few more moves, but we've got a winning position. But this is what I want to just really really drill home. Is, is this setup, right? You wanna, you very often play like f5 at some point. Notice if they have a knight here, you can sack your rook and eliminate that knight. There, there are patterns that you will learn over time of how to get the knight off of f6, which is generally the uh, defender of h7, yeah? So here, remember the point is the knight comes in first, and then when you take, they can't take back, right? So they do this, we take the bishop, and they, they've got nothing. I mean, th there's probably lots of options here, and knight takes is, is, is the best move, that's what we play. And now they do get to get this in, but they lose a rook for their trouble. I guess we can now move this knight as well with two attackers on, on f7. Um, but it, yeah, it all goes downhill from there, and uh, we do end up winning by checkmate on move 41. But. Um, yeah, I thought that would that was just an instructive case study in the in the 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 classic attack in the Grand Prix against the Fianchetto bishop. I mean, obviously, sometimes they don't Fianchetto the bishop, and then you can end up with some slight variations as well. Sometimes you end up attacking on the G file. Sometimes you might lift a rook to help you with your attack as well. But that's what comes with knowing an opening. So I'm off back to bed. I found my complete um, three volume book of Lord of the Rings yesterday on my bookshelf, so I'm going to sit and read that. So uh, wish me luck in my recuperation, but definitely feeling quite a lot better already. Yeah, with the uh, rest. Rest is the key to it all. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.